If you just got an iPad and have zero experience with digital drawing, then this video might be for you. I have distilled down 10 simple tools in Procreate so you can get started drawing right away without being bogged down by all the bells and whistles in the app, which can be a lot. Architects and interior designers are all very busy bodies due to the nature of our profession, and I think the idea of learning a new app like Procreate is enough to prevent us from taking the first step. My name is Henry Gao, I'm a San Francisco based architectural designer and illustrator. With my YouTube channel, I'm here to teach architects, interior designers, and other creatives on how to leverage modern tools to draw better. This content will be delivered in 10 bullet points that are time marked, so you can skip ahead if you want. Let's dive in. This is the first thing you will see when you open Procreate. It's essentially a preview of the artwork and the files you have inside. Yours is gonna look pretty empty, but since I already have artwork in here, you can see I have grouped them based on projects or similar uh, work. There's a couple of things you can do in this view. You can click on one and review the content on the inside. You can swipe left and this will give you the option to delete the entire folder or duplicate. Not sure why you would do, use that. Or share. Share is probably the most useful tool that you'll need you can also click on the name and this will give you the option to rename the folder. To group a drawing, it's very easy. You just tap and hold one folder or if it's a single file and then you just drag it over to the file that you want to have it grouped into and then it's going to group the file in this folder as you can see. To get into a drawing, we'll just use this drawing as example. And now you're in the drawing interface. In the drawing interface, there's toolbars on the top left and top right corner. Uh, gallery will take you back to where you were. And then there's a couple of important tools that you just kind of need to get familiar with. One is called action adjustment, which will do a lot of uh, color adjustments. And this is a selection tool. And then this arrow is your move tool. On the right, top right corner, you have uh, you have a brush tool with lots of brushes and then you have a smudge tool which will allow you to smudge your artwork and then you have an eraser tool and then last you have a layer control and this is kind of like photoshop where you can group things and uh, in layers and the last circle is color this is where you can save color and pull up different color palettes to create a canvas size or the paper size if you will for the drawing hit this plus button and then there is a list of uh, default drawing size made available to you. Uh, typically you can select the paper which is in half by 11 or if you need a custom size paper say you're drawing on 11 by 17 you can click this plus button again and in here you can type in the exact size and pixels if you will um, for the paper size. So here I'm going to select in inches and width, I'm gonna go 11 and height, I'm gonna go 17. At 300 dpi, this is going to tell you the maximum number of layers inside the canvas that you're allowed to create. The bigger the paper, the less maximum layers that you will get. So once you're ready to create, I will also just call this custom canvas size, give it a name. So let's call it 11 by 17 and then hit create and this will take you directly inside the procreate and now this canvas is created in the portrait mode you can just use your finger and uh, pinch to zoom into the entire canvas for architects and interior designers i think one of the most useful thing is the ability to bring in photos and trace on top and there's a couple ways to do that in procreate uh, the most obvious ones are located here. So under import, import will um, let you drive into the iCloud drive. And you can, if, you, if you're a Mac user, this is where you can synchronize your files from your computer to iCloud. And therefore you can access directly the files in there. If you're not a Mac user, you could find a way to bring in your JPEG files or just images. Uh, to the photo app and from there you can import directly from the photo app. So one of the ways is using 
Google Drive or Dropbox if you have it installed in on the iPad and you can download the image from there. From there you can download the image into the photos and then you can click on photos to bring in the image. But note, the size of the canvas that you bring in this way will be limited to the size of the photo. So however big your photo is, when you bring it in, your canvas size is gonna be that size. Of course, you can recrop and enlarge once you're inside the canvas. That is another option. Another option that you can bring in photos is if you know that your images needs to be a certain size and pixel density, you can use one of the empty uh, canvas that you just created and then you can bring in photos from inside the canvas. So under action, canvas, actually under add, you can insert a photo and say you're bringing a photo that's this big and the, the size that you bring in will be the size of the photo and you can enlarge the photos or make it smaller uh, inside the canvas. If you're in the Mac ecosystem like I am, I usually would just airdrop any photos or files from my computer to the iPad, which is the fastest way that I transfer a file back and forth. I wanna give you a rundown on a couple of uh, hand gestures that I use mostly. So the zoom is accomplished by zooming in with two finger. You can rotate the canvas into any degree that you would like, and you can pinch it to, uh, to maximize the canvas to the edge. To undo something, use tap, two finger tap, to redo something, that's three finger tap. And to clear the page, let's say you've had a lot of things on your page, to clear the page is three finger, swipe left and right. So let's talk about the layer basics. On the top right hand corner, this is the layer tool. Click on that, you'll see there's only one layer in, in this layer. And if I wanted to make any annotation or a drawing on top, I almost always wanted to create a new layer and this layer will be on top of the original image. And I can reduce the opacity of the original image by clicking on this end button, which will pull up my blend mode, but more importantly, the opacity. So if I do reduce the opacity to a certain, uh, let's say 50%, this will allow me to see the image better and my drawings better. So next I would select a brush and make any annotation or notes. And if I needed to make additional drawing or notes, I can create another layer and do other notes on top. The benefit of using this kind of workflow is you can always delete a layer or turn a layer on and off and save them as you know different notes or design options. So you can create more and more layers and at the end of the day, you can delete as you need or you can merge all the layers into one layers once you've consolidated your design. So the quick way to do that is just use two fingers and pinch all the layers into one. This is one way to merge all your layers. If you prefer not to merge, but instead group the layers, what you can do is you can click the layers itself and then there's option for combine down. And we would just do the same option a couple more times to combine all the layers into one file. And this way you can create multiple options and group them to have a cleaner sort of a work uh, visual. Additionally, you can also create on the layer itself and then this will bring up additional menus such as renaming, copy, fill, and other things that you might not actually need. And you can also left swipe to delete the layer, to duplicate the layer, and to lock the layer. What's really awesome about Procreate is it comes with so many brushes and types of brushes too. Uh, my go-tos are generally in the ink and in the drawing family. I also have created and uh, customized a few of my favorites and they, they are you know pens, uh, a marker, and a watercolor brush. And I'll leave that as a download in the, in the link below. But make sure you experiment and just try some of these other brushes. They're really amazing how they're able to uh, imitate the look and the feel of, of the analog. So once you have a brush selected, uh, we can go into the color option and to select the color that you wanna draw in. So that you can see I already have some colors saved in the color palette. You can also create your own color palettes by going into this palette option and then hit the plus button. 
and click on create a new palette and automatically it's going to be using it as a default so you can navigate back to the disk and any new colors that you select that you will frequently use you can click on this uh, window and that will just automatically save any new color into that window so i find this to be very useful to create a set of my own brushes that i really like to use to go back and forth and you can also see they have some recommendations for the other color palettes as well so once you have the pen selected you can use the slider on on the left hand side of the procreate this top one will um, increase in size as you go up and this bottom one will increase and decrease in opacity. So these are just kind of two um, easy sliders to use. Procreate is also uh, touch or pressure sensitive. So you will be able to vary your pressure by how much force you're applying on the screen. So in case you need to erase your artwork, the erase tool is located here. What's really good about this tool is you can pick the kind of brush to erase the artwork with. So for example, if I have uh, drew with a uh, marker and I can also choose the same marker brush setting to erase the original art with so this will give you that very consistent uh, look and quality when you're erasing one of the things that I find really helpful when I'm drawing a detail or sketch is to have a gridded paper on the background you can do this by clicking on the action tool under canvas and it's called drawing guide so turning this on and off and also you can actually adjust the size and opacity and thickness of the grid. So size will adjust the size of the square and the opacity, the opacity and thickness of the grid itself. Even though Procreate doesn't have a scale function, I find this generally helpful when I'm drawing a straight line or if I'm counting number of squares to be certain inches or feet, I can do that as well. So you could be a little careless with the text that you're putting on the page because you know you can always move them later. Let's say you're annotating and um, you're not really sure exactly where to put a text just yet. You can just do it as a placeholder. It's just called XXX and then when you've made up your mind, you can do the selection tool and move them wherever it needs to be on the page. And the move tool can be activated without using the selection tool. If you wanted to move the entire content of the page, you can just activate the move tool. And if the entire content is drawn on that single layer, this will move that entire layer to anywhere on the canvas that you need to. So last but not the least, when your drawing is done and we're ready to export this image, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can click on this tool and then go to share. This share will allow you to share the image as Procreate, PSD, PDF, JPEG, PNG, TIFF. I usually will go for either the JPEG or the PDF. So if I click on, alternatively, if you're not inside of this canvas, you can also share when you left swipe and the share button will bring up the same menu of options and formats. So in here you would do the same and to wherever you want to send it to. If you enjoy this video, then you'll probably enjoy other bite-sized content in the future that you can squeeze in during the day. Please subscribe now and click on that bell button to get notified.